for some reason, it just I loved that there was two punches because I wanted because Brett and he delivers it so well. He just goes, "What the fuck, fuck!" in between, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that his performance of that just made me laugh every single time. Harry, I want to bring you in because um, uh, about I mean generally about over the whole series, but especially that first episode. I am not a director. You are a director. I imagine that it's actually quite hard to shoot. A it sounds a bit weird, but it's quite hard to shoot a, a restaurant scene, w capturing everybody's different emotions, because there's a lot going yeah. on, lots of people hiding things and coming out and coming back. But, you know, most of the uh, emotional events, they're, happen they're some off screen, but a lot of it's happening in with yeah. within that very tight environment. You can't really cut away. I mean, you know, please explain more technically <laughs> how you went about this, because it seems to me like it would be really difficult. Well, in a way, I suppose, the thing is, it's a static thing. Everyone's sitting down, largely. They move away, there's a, and um, there is plenty, there is massive of colour in the performances and in the chemistry, but essentially they are still. And so, and you can't move the camera, especially not with our style. But what you can do is, um, well, the first thing you do really as a director is, is make sure people keep up the pace, because that's part of the energy of it. And my favourite note is, hurry up. You know, just get on with it. You know, you don't want people acting too much between the lines. Just get on with it. And that was something that we worked on on the floor. And Phoebe was always encouraging people to speak over each other. So we keep it alive and not dead. Um, and the other thing I think you'll notice if you look at it is that whilst it's, it's a lot about Fleabag's specific point of view and seeing these two sort of um, uh, allies who are all against her. So you've got father and godmother in one two shot. And you've got uh, Claire and Martin in the other, and she's kind of stuck in between. So a great deal of the sort of the energy is made up of the tension of that. And so that you don't get kind of stuck doing face to face to face that can be so boring, finding your group shots, like those two shots, that the whole thing was hinged off that, whilst leaving her kind of isolated in the middle, back and forth. Um, and then there was the question of how you deal with the priest. And I remember we had a bit of a debate, Phoebe and I, because I didn't find myself shooting very many shots of them together. He was always sort of on the edge of her frame or leaning around. And, and I think that that was my unconscious really at work, making sure that he was a mysterious character, that we never saw them snugly together. She's facing these, these two couples that are like snug and comfortable with each other. And that's emphasizing her isolation. But there's this other character who's gradually making her way into her life. So, I guess in, I love two shots. I love things played out within the frame. And so I guess my first sort of general reaction to it is, is trying to keep it um, alive and full of chemistry and not just stuck on one character after another, one face after another. And then we also, we tended to jump right back and have these very wide and static frames that felt like you were, it was almost quite theatrical really. And I guess the other thing we thought a lot about and argued about was the location, because you know, how well off was it? How expensive was it going to be? And we sort of settled on, I think I find myself channeling Goodfellas a bit, you know, this idea of a family, like a <laughs> mafiosi family that were full of smiles, that were just going to stab each other in the back. Beautiful, I love it. With this location. <laughs> yeah, it ended up with this sort of location that was, and it was Phoebe's idea, she, she pointed out the, um, restaurant scene in Goodfellas with the red like with the red lamp shed when Joe Pesci almost you know freaks out yeah. and there was something dangerous and yet warm about it it was a place you didn't mind hanging around in for half an hour but there was something going on in the shadows and then um, Tony Miller kind of lent into that with this kind of chiaroscuro deep shadowed lighting effect so yeah. it's a lot of different stuff I, I, think, I do um, like the idea of the Goodfellas, though, because I would like to know who is the Joe, Joe Pesci character within this yeah. scene. Because <laughs> it could be well, kind of a few people, really, I have to say. You well, know, if somebody's going to blow, and actually it was Fleabag. It's Fleabag. It's Fleabag. <laughs> it's Fleabag. It is Fleabag, and she sits there. And actually the camera, the only thing, sort of, an odd chain thing we really changed was that we were always on the sticks, always steady, all the way through, during all the sustained tension. But after the, um, the moment Claire announces her, um, her miscarriage, spoiler, sorry, 
her miscarriage, <laughs> then we go handheld. And when we stayed, so we took the camera off the leash, and from then on, it's uncertain. And that's, I think, the closest yeah. to that Joe Pesci moment, when she leech, when she punches Martin's lights, yeah, and suddenly that's, wakes up. Yeah, because I wanted to ask about that, because I've actually, uh, I may sound some kind of, like some kind of weirdo, but I paused that bit, the, the punch <laughs> bit, because there's so much going yeah. on in terms of the first punch and then the second and the oh. reaction and the, and the, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. Should we, should we go yeah. through it? I mean, you know, would you like to spill, you know, how are you feeling about this? I mean, it sounds like it was quite uh, technically difficult and perhaps emotionally, I don't know. Well, it took a lot of rehearsal. We had a stuntman come in, a, a wonderful guy, Andy, and actually he tried to make it quite elaborate. And in fact, what you watch, I suppose, this is what I think about stunts and fights is they have to be and very believable because you have to somehow believe that she's going to punch Martin, he's going to push her back, she's going to bring her head back and, and hit um, Priest in the eye, and then the waitress is going to get it. So it took a lot of thinking and planning um, and trying not to make it look too interesting, if you like, just to make it real. Yes, well, very much so, yeah. I mean, um, Phoebe, do you want to tell me how many times you actually did do this? I mean, because Harry's not going to say. You, you know, you can all be honest with us. How many times did you do the hitting scene? <gasps> I think we only got a couple. I think we only had, like, <laughs> one or two, unfortunately. I could, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun doing that stuff. But I, I remember it being... I remember when writing it, knowing that I'm asking for, like, five things to happen in one stunt, because, like, four people have to end up bleeding. And that was, a, and, and in like a very short amount of time and it has, the rhythm has to be like boom, boom, boom. And you have to be able to see everyone's um, moment of impact to make sense of everyone's um, blood <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> and also again, in that first image ever that was talked about, when I, the first one I wrote down, it was literally word for word. So when I put, when I hand the, um, the napkin down to uh, Maddie Rice, the actress, but the character, the waitress on the floor, I still did, I didn't know who that woman was. It said Fleabag passes something to another woman who's got bleeding nose. And so it was really, it was so important that her story had to come, because she seemed so significant in the first scene. And then you realise, oh, she's just, uh, you know, a poor waitress who just really wanted to like do a good job and then got like completely mixed up in it. Um, and so that was, it, I, think, I think the challenge was that it just all had to be so linear and tight with each other, but it was such a, such an exciting moment when it happened and just all the brilliant ideas like and you know knowing that it was a backwards headbutt onto um yeah. onto the priest and then for some reason it just i loved that there was two punches because i wanted because of brett and he delivers it so well he just goes what the fuck fuck in between <laughs> <laughs> and uh that his performance of that just made me laugh every single time because it's um <laughs> it's, it's the shock and also that he, he's he's outraged <laughs> at the same yeah. time um so yeah, it was it was a challenge, but it was a lot of fun, and especially having shot the whole thing. Was, the idea was for it to feel incredibly claustrophobic, the way that Harry shot it, and and you know how it was later edited by Gary so brilliantly. It's just it's also sort of close. We actually jump out to the wide only like I think maybe once or twice to give some air because we're all building to this moment where it suddenly just needs to like explode, and then so it was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, lot Gary, of fun. can I bring you in here because you know there you are. Hello, editing. <laughs> Um, when you're uh, editing a scene like that, or just generally in Fleabag, there's a lot of pace, isn't there? There are, there are bits where there's uh, flashbacks coming in. There's, there's at no point do I feel like, oh, we can relax now. There's, no, there's, there's an energy to the whole series all the way through, even in the emotional scenes, which might be longer. When you're um, editing something like that, uh, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about it in in terms of beats or I, I do, you know, how do you think about it? Well, that, that first episode, like Harry said, everything was um, all in one location and it was quite static, the, all the material. So in order to, plus when I started watching all the rushes, there were so many brilliant looks to each other because there was so many dynamics going on. <clears throat> and, or, you know, just by watching the rushes, you could just see that, in sort of non non dialogue stuff, there was loads of things going on, and there was a whole almost like a a subplot of looks that were going across the table, flying across. And I was thinking, right, well, how are we going to get all of these looks in as well as the dialogue? 
you know, so I thought, well, let's try and go as fast as we can. And I, <laughs> I thought, you know, tried to build in, try and put in all of these looks as well as all of the dialogue and just see where we, where we ended up with. And, um, you know, in a way, I think the way that brilliantly Phoebe wrote the sort of extended introduction allowed us to cut quite fast and then give it, give the whole, there was a rhythm and an energy that was sort of just born out of, you know, trying to get in all of these good looks. So I think that was, it sort of set the tone in a way to, to, um, to try and take this static situation and, and sort of see how fast we could go with it. 